Good morning. I realized that I haven't been gangster in a while, like months. So I put on the backwards hat, but uh, I realized that the pigtails kind of <laughs> negate the gangster effect. Um, I'm not doing anything today. This is it. It's just gonna be in the room today. So if you're not interested in that, then I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> um, okay, so a bunch of people gave me information about Hiro Tada Ototake, which is at the beginning of yesterday's video, I took a video of a poster of a man who doesn't have any arms or legs. And um, I was talking about how it's so interesting to me, and there was a lot of Japanese written, written on it because it's an interview. Um, and a lot of people kind of explained it to me, but I got a private message from someone called Valid appeal, and um, this person, I don't know if you're a man or a woman, <laughs> sorry, um, translated the entirety of the poster for me, so it's really fantastic, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read to you a couple of um, things from it. So there's like a, a long section in the middle, and, it, and he says, um, the question is, what does being handicapped mean to you? He says, is a charm, just like people having different skin colors, or how tall they are. I took my disadvantage into something worthwhile, such as being a writer or a teacher. Being handicapped is awkward, but I never felt uncomfortable about that, ever. We are one in 6.8 billion a phenomenon. Unique, awesome individual. I want others to feel the same. <laughs> it's awesome. And, um... Also, there was, a, there was a question about what's your childhood memory, and I said that he invented a remote-controlled basketball dribbling, dribbling device, but I was totally wrong, of course. Um, <laughs> he, he said that he played basketball. He used to jump off of his wheelchair and dribble with eight-inch arms. So I guess, he, I guess he's not totally armless. He has like eight inches worth of an arm on, I don't know if it's each side, but at least one side, um, so he can control his wheelchair that way. Um, that's so cool. Can you imagine, like, being at a basketball game? And not only is there a kid in a wheelchair on the other team, but then he, like, jumps off of his wheelchair, and since he has no legs, he's, like, right there on the ground dribbling. That's, like, the coolest thing I've ever heard of. Um, and then he says, what's your favorite sport? Football. Because there's always a suitable position for everyone, which is true, I guess, if you're, if you're, you know, just d depending on what type of person you are, you, you can get a position, I guess. Um, and then, what is your mental support? Knowing people who truly understand my situation. That's great, so he's a journalist, a sports writer, a TV presenter, and a school teacher. Which is fabulous. Um, and this person sent me a bunch of other links to various interviews with him. And all of that's going to be in the description. So thank you so much for all that information. It's, it's fabulous. And then a lot of people also translated the word yabai for me. Because <laughs> I kind of mentioned it. And at first I was really depressed because the first few translations came in as, oh, it means awful or disgusting or t dangerous or terrible. And I was like, oh, that's so mean that someone would walk up and say that I'm, I'm yabai. <laughs> that's so mean. But then, like, as more people started thinking about it, it was like, it, it's like a slang way of saying that it's cool. So kind of like, that's wicked. Because wicked obviously means bad, but slang has made wicked mean good. So, yay! And you guys want me to change his name to... You guys want me to change Bruce Lee Mullet Kid's name to I Love You Kid? But I just, I love the name Bruce Lee Mullet Kid so much, even though it has nothing to do with who he is, or what he looks like, or what he does. <laughs> I am still going to call him that. Um, his hair is... Maybe I can explain it and you guys can help me. It's kind of like... It's buzzed on the sides. And it, it's kind of like from here up. And then it like points at this point. And it's not a mohawk. It's really... And then there used to be a mullet too, but now there's not, so... It's kind of like, he looks like a boat. Like he would, I don't know. 
like Tristan Taylor, but not really that extreme. I don't know. I really can't figure out what his hair looks like. <laughs> not like Bruce Lee at all. Anyway, um, what else have I got? What else? Oh, from a couple of days ago, I think it was Monday, maybe? I said, well, what should we name this kid who is like, I'm so stupid, and I think you guys came up with Leeson, which is how he spelled lesson. A lot of people were like, oh, call him Neam Leeson, like Liam Neeson. <laughs> I think that's just too creative for me. <laughs> so we can go with Leeson Kid. Leeson Kid is, is a fun name. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, I wanted to start making a pros or cons, pros and cons list of um, staying in Japan for a second year. And um, I, maybe I'll use that, maybe I'll put that on the whiteboard that I used to put up the um, countdown to something epic thing. And a lot of people ask, like, what happened to the epic day? It was cancelled because of earthquake radiation, etc, etc. So, stop writing that comments, because every time I see it, I go, oh, <laughs> It just depresses me. Um, so maybe I'll start a pros or cons list on that whiteboard. I'm looking up. It, it's hanging up up there. That's why I'm looking up there. Um, what else? So, I don't know. If you... I'm trying not to let the um, earthquake, radiation, tsunami situation influence my decision of whether or not I want to stay another year or not. And, of course, I haven't been asked back by my company yet, so um, depending on if they even ask me back, I mean, they could be like, yeah, no, you're awful. Um, so don't come back. So, <laughs> which I really hope and I really don't think they're going to say, but you never know. I mean, maybe they're, maybe everyone passively hates me and they're not telling me. <laughs> that thought just, like, <laughs> hurt my heart. Um, I also, I just got all my bills for, um, March? My March bills in the mail, and they're all, like, really low, of course, because, um, not only did we lose electricity for hour chunks at a time, and we were all trying to conserve electricity intensely, but I was also gone for, um, I, I, when did I leave? Did I leave on the 22nd? 23rd? I don't know, but, you know, I was gone for at least a week of it, so... At least all my bills are really small this month. <laughs> um, Alright, so um, at this point, I'm not really doing or saying anything. Um, just kind of updating. Oh, one more thing! <clears throat> so at my school, my favorite elementary school, I got kind of like their yearbook-y type thing. I mean, it's not, it's not actually a yearbook. It's just, you know, every page, or every class gets a page with their school picture on it. And then, um, every kid gets to write a message, which is awesome. Um, and I think all the teachers got to write messages, too. So, this is really exciting, and I can't wait until my Japanese gets better, and then I can actually read what these kids say, because, like, some of them, some of them I can sort of dissect, like, especially the earlier ones, like, the little kids, because they only use hiragana and katakana. So, um, it's easier to read what they say, but, you know, once you get up to, like, 5th and 6th grade, they're using, like, kanji that I don't understand. So, um, um, I'm just trying to, I, I'm excited to, to be able to read these, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, like, bringing this into, uh, school with me, and I'm, like, translating it by myself, and I'm like, I'm learning so much, oh my god. And I asked if there was some kind of yearbooky type thing for the junior high school, Am I super close right now? I suddenly looked up and I was like, I'm staring right at the camera. Um, I asked if there was a... <laughs> now I feel really far away. <laughs> I asked if there was some kind of yearbook thing for the junior high school because um, then I would have all the pictures of the kids. But um, I haven't heard anything about that. I think that there is because I had to write a message for it. Right? So, and we had to take pictures and junk believe. And I saw their school pictures when they were all happy and smiling. So there has to be some kind of yearbook that I'm just not seeing. Um, so, I don't know. Okay. How long have I been talking about?
about nothing. Okay, it's exactly 10 minutes I've just been talking about nothing. Nothing. I'm not getting out of my pajamas today. Yeah, I'm done. I don't think I have anything else to say. As soon as I turn the camera off, I'm going to think of something else I want to say. But even if I do that, then I'm not going to turn the camera back on because I'm doing this all in one clip, so I don't have to edit. Yay! <laughs> so um, I guess I will see you tomorrow. Maybe I'll do something more exciting tomorrow. I don't have plans. Oh, that was the other thing. Golden Week plans. <laughs> False alarm. Uh, Golden Week plans. I'm thinking, I mean, this probably won't happen, but I'm thinking about how awesome it would be to go south and just to see other parts of Japan that I haven't seen yet. I mean, just to, just to experience it. So what do you guys think? I mean, I know you're all going to say, yeah, go south, go, of course. But like, you know, there's so much, it's inconvenient because, <laughs> you know, a lot of people are going to be traveling Golden Week because that's several days off that most people don't normally have, so it's going to be stressful, and I'm going to be stressed out, and stress, 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 so I don't know, I'll probably just end up staying home, because it'll just, it's three days, it's like a long weekend in the middle of the week. So, um, yeah, alright, now for real, I'm ending it, goodbye, I'll see you tomorrow.